Hey everyone, and we're back. My name is Miss Carla Tanager, and we are here with a new Let's Play. This is It Follows. Apparently, it's some kind of creepy pasta game. I have never played any of these creepy pasta-like games, so let's give it a go. Bedtime. Bedtime is supposed to be a happy event for the for a tired child. For me, it was terrifying. Oh wait, I should probably be putting on a voice for this, shouldn't I? Well, some children might complain about being put to bed before they have finished watching a film or playing their favorite video game. When I was a child, nighttime was something to truly fear. Somewhere in the back of my mind, it still is. Okay. This is me. Okay. It's it's one of those games. So, okay. Mr. Teddy. Full of toys and stuff. Post for a movie? I got it for my brother. It's a wolf. <laughs> of course it is. I cannot prove what happened to me was objectively real, but I can swear that what I've experienced was genuine horror. I fear that I fear which in my life I'm glad to say has never been equaled. I will re I will relate it to you to something something I didn't mean to press that button. I'll be glad to just get it off my chest. Something really bad happened to you, didn't it? This is my father. Okay. Don't go pulling out too much stuff now. It's bedtime soon. Okay. I can't remember exactly when it started, but my apprehension towards falling asleep seemed to correspond with my being moved into a room of my own. What? You didn't you weren't able to cuddle your parents anymore? This is my mother. How would how do you like your new room? You'll be sleeping alone for the first time. Okay. Am I supposed to go to bed? I like sleeping. I don't know about you guys, but sleeping is the best time of the day. Tell me to keep out of the room so we both had shared until then. I was eight years old at the time, and until then I had shared a room quite happily with my older brother. I was perfectly understandable as, for a boy of five years old, my five years my senior, my brother eventually wished for a room of his own, and as a result, I was given a room at the back of the house. As my brother was given a new bed, I was given the bunk beds which we used to share. While I was excited about sleeping on my own, I was excited at the thought of being able to sleep in the top bunk which seemed far more adventurous to me. I always loved sleeping in the top bunk. I hated sleeping in the bottom bunk. Anytime there was a bunk bed, I had to sleep in the top. I couldn't stand it any other way. Because if I slept in the bottom bunk, I kept feeling like something was going to come attack me. And if I slept in the top bunk, despite the fact that it put you at a very convenient biting height, it still made me feel a lot safer because if something tried to come at me from the side, I'd go, No! Get off! <laughs> this could be like my little perch. All right, it's bedtime. Already? Yes, adults need their sleep, you see. You'll be sleeping alone for the first time. You excited? Yes, Mom. Something really bad's gonna happen. Like there's a soul possessing the bottom bunk or something. Alright, I'm turning off the lights. Good night. Good night. Okay. It's implied that the kid survived whatever happened to him because he said it hasn't... The fear that they felt hasn't been equaled since then. Chapter One, Cave. Okay. Any bad things happen when you're sleeping? You get... Oh. Um... Por qué? <laughs> yes. Yes, I want to save. Hi. The fuck are you? I see you up there. Okay, then. Well, let's keep going. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about a thing. Is this supposed to be his dream or something? If so, this is a really shitty dream. What the deuce? What kind of doorway is that? I wonder what's cooking. I don't know. A pot and some ragged cloth. The fact that the game gives me an option to save makes me think I'm gonna have to run at some point. A cold and welcoming breeze comes from the bottom of the stairs. Uh, stay here. I just want to see if there's a sprint function. I'm not sure if there is or not. What the hell? Stalking is such a strong word. I prefer to think of it more as intense research on one individual. By the way, your missing sock is under your bed with me. Just kidding. I don't know why that person turned into Metatron, but let's go down. Hello? Nope. 
Yes, you keep going. Oh. Apparently this is a puzzle. Okay, can I go? Shit. Alright. I don't know, whatever I did, I did it! It's fine, don't worry about it. Let's just keep going. No! <laughs> whatever that is, I'm just gonna say nope to that and keep going. Hi! You are not under my bed, Mr. Man. Why? Because I said so. And if you are, I'm gonna stab you in the butt. I'm gonna stab you in the butt with a butter knife. Which means I'm gonna have to put a lot of pressure into it. And since I'm putting a lot of pressure into stabbing you in the butt with a knife, I can't... I'm going slower. And since I'm gonna put so much pressure into stabbing you in the butt with a knife, you know you're gonna get wrecked. I didn't do it. Okay... That's not suspicious at all. Oh, I hear birds! Oh, I woke up. Mom! I had a bad dream! Mom! 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 I had a scary dream! Mom! 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 Mom, I need a hug. Why does it look like there are two beds? That that one bed is two beds that have been pushed together? Sweetie, what's wrong? I had a bad dream. Aw, that's too bad, sweetie. I'll be up in a minute and we can eat breakfast together. Alright, hurry up. Go change your clothes and I'll be right there. We got a cool mom. Our mom's cool people. She's all sweet and motherly. She's like Trisha Elric from, uh... I'm not controlling this. She's like Trisha Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. Am I Alphonse? I'm okay with this. And I said Alphonse because the hair is brown and Alphonse's hair is still blonde, but it's not as blonde as Edward's and I just anime nerded. I don't do that a lot because I'm not an anime nerd, but... I won't bother you with the details. The one thing I remember is that even though I played with friends like I always did, somehow I still felt lonely. I didn't enter my new room until later that night. It was time to go to sleep again. I would not want to go to sleep. Fuck that. <laughs> not after this bullcrud. I'm a sleepy time. That was a really, really, really long fade to black there. Good job, game. Chapter 2. Labyrinth. There's such a sad love Deep in your eyes a kind of pale jewel Opens and closed within your eyes I place the sky within your eyes What? <laughs> yes, I started singing David Bowie there. Shh. Shh. That's the only kind of labyrinth there should be, in my opinion. I didn't do it. Okay, I'm not going that way. What is this, like an MC Escher room or something? I didn't do it. Okay. Not going that way. Not going that way. Oh, right, I have to put these in... Okay, I have to push these in order. I'm assuming. That's usually the way these things work. It's not that one, which means it has to be the one in the other corner. Ye yes, the happy ones. Okay. No. Do I just want to hit the happy ones? No. Oh, no, I want to hit them all. Okay. And I hit this one. Aha! There we go! Onwards to more adventures! What? 
What? A wanted poster. That's nice. Why does it feel like something's chasing me? Hi. Jew dickbag! Oh, do you guys see that on the screen? Do you see- do you- I see something on the screen! Do you see something on the screen? Because I see something on the screen. Okay. You, you guys see that, right? I totally see a face on the screen right now. <gasps> Whoa. Nope. Hi, oh, hey, my character's going faster now. Okay. Seriously, I see something. That can't be just me. That face that flashed up on the screen, I swear it's still there. No, no, it's definitely still there, and it's definitely, definitely there. Definitely, definitely there. Whoa. I'm gonna chase you down, and I'm gonna murder your face and stab you in the butt. Wherever that dude is. Okay. Can I go this way? No. There is a face there. There is definitely a face decal. You stop that, okay? Na 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 Hi. Could you not, please? Okay, yeah, the face is dead. Alrighty then! So Broseph! You wanna go? You wanna go? Oh, I should probably shouldn't take my hands off the screen! Okay then. Sup. Could you not, please? Could you just go? I don't- I don't want you! And unless you want me to stab you in the butt with a butter knife, you should probably back the hell away from me. Nothing of interest. Do -do 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 -do. This isn't really scary right now, even though it's really creepy. I'm just gonna stab this guy in the butt. Okay, seriously, dude. Wonder what happens if I just sit here. Just find a spot, park my butt, and stay there. You knock that off. You knock that off. Oh, hi, there it is. Oh, wait, am I supposed to find the doll? Is that, what, is that what's going on here? I can find the doll. I can do that. And each time I find the doll, it makes him appear more. Great, because that's what I needed. It is kind of difficult to pay attention to the screen now when you've got that decal going on. Do 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 do. Okay, finding a red doll, finding a blue doll, finding a doll as I'm getting chased by things and my character's running even faster than before. Oh, there he is. Hi. Sup, bruh? Can I help you? Can, can I help you? I don't get- I get creeped out easily by some things. I don't get scared by things. Easily. When you awaken from a deep sleep to something moving or stirring, it can take a few- It can take a few moments for you to truly understand what is happening. The fog of sleep hangs over your eyes and ears even when lucid. Something was moving, there was no doubt about that. At first I wasn't sure what it was. Everything was dark, almost pitch black. But there was enough light creeping in from the outside out to outline that room. Two thoughts appeared in my mind almost simultaneously. The first was that my parents were in bed because the rest of the house lay both in darkness and silence. The second thought turned to the noise, a noise which had obviously woken me. That was it, bed sheets rustling in the dark and someone breathing. As if some disturbed sleeper was attempting to get all too comfortable in the bottom bunk. I lay there in disbelief, thinking that the noise was either my imagination, or perhaps just my pet cat finding somewhere comfortable to spend the night. Okay. It was then that I noticed my door, shut as, as it had been when I'd fallen asleep. Perhaps my mom had checked in on me. Oh, the door's open. And the cat had sneaked into my room then. Oh wait, the door was closed and you wait, had the cat get in here. Yes, that must have been it. I turned to face the wall, closing my eyes in the vain hope that I could fall back to sleep. As I moved, the resting noise from underneath me ceased. I thought I must have disturbed my cat, but I quickly realized that the visitor in the bottom bunk was much less mundane than my pet trying to sleep, and much more sinister. As if alerted to and disgruntled by my presence, 
the disturbed sleeper began to toss and turn violently, like a child having a tantrum in their bed. This is getting creepier and creepier and creepier. I could hear the sheets twist and turn with increasing ferocity. Fear then gripped me, not unlike the sub, not like the subtle sense of unease I had experienced earlier, but now potent and terrifying. My heart raced as my eyes panicked, scanning the almost impenetrable darkness. I let out a cry. As most young boys do, I instinctively shouted on my mother. I could hear something stir on the other side of the house, but as I began to breathe in a sigh of relief that my parents were coming to save me, the bunk bed sternly started to shake violently. So the bed is possessed and we need to burn it. Dip it in acid, set it on fire. It was a grip by an earthquake scraping against the wall. I could hear the sheets below me thrashing around as if tormented by the malice. I did not want to jump down to safety as I feared the thing at the bottom bunk would reach out and grab me, pulling me into the darkness so I stayed there, white knuckles clutching my own blanket like a shroud of protection. Itchy ear. The wait seemed like an eternity. And then, Mom. What's wrong? Did you have a bad dream? I cried and my mother consoled me. Tears of fear followed by relief streamed down my face. Yet through all the horror and relief, I did not tell her why I was so upset. I cannot explain it, but it was as though whatever had been in that bunk would return, even if I so much as spoke of it. Whether that was the truth, I do not know, but as a child I felt as if the unseen menace was be remained close, listening. My mother lay in the empty bunk, promising to stay there until morning. I remember the next day wanting to go, not wanting to go anywhere, but be anywhere. <laughs> English, I am so good at it. No, I'm not. But in the suffo but that suffocating room. It was Saturday, and I played outside quite happily with my friends. Although our house is not as large as we were lucky to have a long sloping garden in the back. That would be so cool. I have the best gardens growing up, guys, or the best um, backyards. It was awesome. Just fruit trees for days. We played there often. As much of it was overgrown and we could hide in the bushes. Climb the huge sycamore tree which towered above all else and easily imagine ourselves in the, great, in the throes of a great adventure. As fun as it all was, occasionally my eye would turn to a small window in my room. Ordinary, slight, and innocuous. But for me... That thin boundary was looking uh, was a looking glass into a strange, cold pocket of dread. Outside, the lush green surroundings of our garden filled with the smiling faces of my friends. Inside, the feeling of something in that room, watching me play, waiting for the night when I would be alone, eagerly filled me with hate. Eagerly filled with hate. It may sound strange to you, but by the time my parents ushered me back into that room for the night, I said nothing. I didn't protest. I didn't even make an excuse as to why I couldn't sleep there. I still felt that this thing would be enraged if I so much as spoke of it. Another night came. So this was probably a whole, I don't want them to hurt my parents, so I'm protecting them by not telling them of things. So I watched a game, Factorize, Chapter 3. So I watched a game, um, a couple Let's Plays of, what was it, The Boogeyman? Boogeyman? That's kind of what this reminds me of, is the, ga is the game The Boogeyman. It's like, oh, there's something under my bed! There's something under my bed! No! But this time it's, there's something in my bunk! There's something in my bunk! Wait a minute. Wait a minute! A huge skull. Banner along pulls tool and turn to make the details. Okay then! I'ma just keep going if you don't gosh down mind it. It's flashing at me. Don't you flash at me. Nobody wants to see that. It's got silver eyes. It's a Five Nights at Freddy reference. Because that's the name of the book. Which I haven't read. Am I missing something? Is the screen getting redder? Oh. Righty then. Okay. Hey, I have a pentacle like that. 
Got a couple of them, actually. Pentagram, pentacle, whatever. But yeah. Oh, it's a wall. <laughs> it looked like it was something. And it changed something? Okay, I'm gonna assume that changed something and I just didn't notice it. Do 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 do. I'm a little kid. I'm a little kid. Just trying to get out of this hell. What's this? There's a runway at the airport. No comment on the blood there. Okay, then. So it's like you're going into the hell world of Silent Hill every night. That would really suck. Okay, I'm assuming I have to go there. But we have to figure out how to, um... How to, uh... Actually get through there. It's really hard to tell the flooring from the walls in this game. Okay... I feel like... Ooh, sorry about that. I feel like that's a failure of game design. So I'm say, eh, eh, oh god. There's truly nothing there. Again, I feel like that's a failure of game design if I literally cannot tell the difference between your walls and your floor. I mean, it might be more obvious on the recording, but what I'm looking at right now... Kinda hard to tell the difference. Some kind of altar. Is it this way? Well, this area is new at least, and something. Something for me to no, that's still locked. How about this way? Nope. <laughs> okay, so uh what did I even unlock? Game, tell me where to go. See, like right then, I thought it wasn't on the. Fl I thought it that was part of the ceiling, the fl part of the flooring I was just on. But no, it was not. The fuck are you? Are you something? Okay, that probably opened one of the other ones. This no, it's not that one. Could it be the one down here? Nope, I can see the little thing sticking out, so it's probably one of the ones on the other side. So I'm guessing that we're supposed to go to each little thingy-ma-bob, and by that I mean, uh, thingy-ma-bob. English, Scarlet, do you, motherfucker, do you speak it? I do not. Okay, it opened this one. I'm gonna open that. What the shit? No! <laughs> you back the fuck away. You get away from me, silly billy. What the? Oh, hi, how you doing? There's just a mask on the floor now. Okay. So that obviously opened another one. So it either opened the one in the top right hand corner or it opened the one down here. Doom, 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 doom. Uh, didn't open that one. Didn't open that one. So it probably opened the one at the top. Whew! It is not late enough for me to be yawning. Excuse your face, my lungs. Excuse your face, my lungs. Again, English is my first language, I swear. Even though I can speak Japanese semi-fluently, despite the fact I've forgotten a lot of it in the last couple months, English is in fact my first language. I will stab you in the butt! Swear. Just right, just pow right in the kisser. Pow right in the kisser. Pow right in the kisser. Okay. Oh, are you saying hello to me? Hi! Hi. Some kind of machine. Is it a ghosty machine? Is it a ghost in the machine? I like that anime. Ghost in the Machine Standalone Complex. I need to watch the movies because I haven't yet, but I do really like the anime. 
There's not a lot of enemies I do like, and that's one of them. That thing behind me is gonna move. Yep. Scary, not scary. Wait a minute, I hit the thing. Did that not open anything? Okay, it must have opened something. Am I missing an area? Uh. Oh, okay. Anything in here? Something, 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 something. Okay, that one must have opened the one down here. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, it did. Okay, then. Hopefully this is the last one. I didn't do it! Whatever it was, I didn't do it. Let's go back to the main chamber. I'm assuming that's where I have to go. Oh. Hi. Hi. Oh, shit! Oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute! Can I die in this game? Funny how certain words can be made hidden from your mind no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that night, lying in the darkness alone, frightened, aware of the rotten change in the atmosphere. The thickening of the air as if something had displaced it. As I heard the first casual twists of the bed sheets below, the first anxious increase in my heartbeat of the realization that something was once again in the bottom bunk. That word. A word which had been sent into exile, filtered up through my consciousness. Breaking free of all repression, gasping for the air, screaming, etching, and carving itself into my mind. Ghost. So it is a ghost in the shell! Or ghost in the machine. Ghost in the shell, stand alone. Ghost in the shell? Yeah. I like ghost in the shell. As that thought came to me, I noticed that my unwelcome visitor had ceased moving. The bed sheets lay calm and dormant, but they'd been replaced by something far more hideous. A slow, rhythmic rasping heaved and escaped from the thing below. I could imagine its chest rising and falling, each sordid, wheezing, and garbled breath. Dip in acid, set on fire! Just take the entire bunk bed, put it in a vat of sulfuric acid, leave it overnight, and then in the morning, stir it, bring it up to boil, you know, maybe add some noodles, and then set it on fire. It's a recipe for, um, Scarlet's Fiery Noodles. Yep. Sulfuric acid. Hydrochloric acid. Uh... I shuddered and beyond, and hoped beyond all hope that it would leave without an occurrence. The house lay as it had the previous night in a thick blanket of darkness. Silence prevailed, all but for the perverted breath of my as yet unseen bunkmate. I lay there terrified. I just wanted this thing to go, to leave me alone. What did it want? Then something unmistakably chilling transpired. It moved. It moved in a way different from before. When it threw itself in... When it threw itself around in the bottom bucket, it seemed unrestrained, without purpose, almost animalistic. For that thing lying there in the darkness, that thing which seemed intent on terrorizing a young boy, calmly and nonchalantly sat up. Its labored breathing became louder. Now only a mattress and a few flimsy wooden slats separated my body from the unearthly breath below. I lay there, my eyes filled with tears, a fear which mute words cannot relate to you or anyone else course through my veins. I would not have believed that this fear could have been heightened, but I was so wrong. I imagined what this thing would look like sitting there listening from below my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. Imagination then tried its- then turned to an unnerving reality. It began to touch the wooden slats which my mattress sat on. It seemed to caress them carefully, running what I imagined fingers and a hand- Finger bones? Sure. Across the surface of the wood. Shh! Don't you loud noise me! Don't you jump scare me, game! Then, with great force, it prodded angrily between two slats into the mattress. Even through the padding, it felt as though someone had viciously stuck their fingers into my side. I let out an almighty cry, and the wheezing, shaking, and moving thing in the bunk below replied in kind by violently vibrating the bunk as it had done the night before. The small planks of flakes of wood powdered on my blanket from the wall as the frame of the bed scraped along it backwards and forwards. 
I once again was bathed in light and nursed to my mother, loving, caring as she always was, for the comforting hug and calming words which eventually subdued my hysteria. Of course she asked what was wrong, but I could not say. I dared not say. I simply said one word over and over and over again. Nightmare. Cool story, bro! The pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night, I would awaken to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time, I would scream so as to not provide this abomination with time to prod and feel for me. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping with the arrival of my mother, who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk. How did that go on for weeks or months? Do you think your parents would do something? I don't know, put you in a different room? Seemingly unaware of the sinister force torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I managed to feign an illness a few times to came up with other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours each night in that place. The room where the light from the outside did not sit right, alone with that thing. With time, you can become desensitized to almost anything, no matter how horrific. I had come to realize that for whatever reason, this thing could not harm me when my mother was present. I am sure the same would have been said for my father, but as loving as he was, waking, waking him from sleep was almost impossible. Waking me, on the other hand, was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares. Oh, chapter four, anger overload. Unlimited anger. Okay, what? Oh, great, we're in a church. Cool. I should end the video here, but I'm not going to, because I don't feel like it. Let's keep going. Earthquake? Well, duh. Do, 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 do. Nope. Nop. Just nop. We're just gonna go with nop. Mm -mm. What the fuck? Oh, it's a spider. I was gonna say, wait a minute! This is a little creepy for a church. All of a sudden. Another one. Do, 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 do. Okay, then. This is really cool for something that was made in RPG Maker. S -s 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 Bravo. Bravo to the creator of this game. Some very good parallax. Well, that's not parallax, but you know what I mean. What the? Oh. Do, 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 do. I didn't do. Oh shit. Um. I done goofed. I done goofed. The goofing. I have done it. I goofed. I goofed. What the shit? What the what? What the deuce? What the no? You stay rich. No, 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 no. Well, um, I died. Except again, I don't think I can die in this game. But what? Oh, go oh, hi. Stop. Soup. Drop. Shop. Mop. Clop. Crop. This is gonna keep going, isn't it? You know, repetition can be good sometimes, just not all the time. Granted, I am also the one who is not easily scared. Cause I'm just like, nah, nah bruh, I'm fine, don't worry about it. It's creepy and that's awesome, but I'm not really scared. Mostly because I don't think you can die in this game. At least I don't think so. Okay, how many of these are there? At least I'm not going clip clop anymore. Clip, clop, clip, clip, clop, 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 clop. Am I missing something? No. Shut up, baby! I don't got no babies! 
So my best friend, my best friend has a baby, and his name is... He is a godchild, he's named after a god. And he is awesome. Best baby ever. These babies, however, a little bit less so. Except that one with the mustache. That, the, the baby doll with the mustache? That one gets a scarlet seal of approval. I like it. Seriously, that baby is the best baby. It's got a, it's got like a curly Q mustache. That makes me happy. Hi! Sup? Fine, I'll run away from the babies. Run to the babies! Woo! Babies! Baby! 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 More babies! So many babies! 300 babies! So I just got trampled to death by babies. Um. My greatest fears were realized in the winter. The days grew short and the longer nights merely provided this wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her community her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerative illness, robbing a person of their memories one day at a time. Soon she recognized none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved from her house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights. My mother decided she would stay with her. Oh, dear. As much as I loved my grandmother, I felt nothing but anguish at her illness. To this day, I still feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her, but of what my nightly visitor would do should it become aware of my mother's absence. Her presence being the one thing that was sure to be protecting me from the full horror of this thing's reach. I rushed home from school that day and immediately wrenched the bed sheets and, and the mattress from the lower bunk, removing all of the slats and placing an old desk, a chest of drawers, and some chairs. Why didn't you think of this earlier? Which he kept in a cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. I told my father I was making an office, which he found adorable. But I would be damned if I gave that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As darkness approached, I lay there knowing my mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only pulse... Impulse was sneak into her jewelry box and take a small family crucifix, which I had seen there before. While my family are not very religious, at that age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious, the gri while gripping the crucifix under my pillow tightly in one hand, sleep eventually came and I drifted off to dream. I hoped I would awaken in the morning without incident. Unfortunately, that night was the most terrifying of all. How long is this game? <laughs> Urban Explorer, Chapter 5. How many chap- I should have looked up how many chapters were in this game before I started it. I should have, but I didn't. Do it anyway! This is gonna be a long video. It's gonna be a long video because I want to get this done in one sitting. The feeling that something's invading your privacy, even without ill will, is still disturbing. I'm pretty sure this thing has a lot of ill will. Okay, thanks. Let's follow the demon. I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna stab you in the butt with my butter knife. Butter knife, butt. Butter knife, butt. Stab you in the butt with my butter knife. I ain't scared of no ghost. 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 Okay. It's just me or is the color changing? Everything's kind of yellowy. Hello? Wow. Ah. Don't you sniffle at me. Okay. Not entirely sure where I'm going. But it's relatively straight, so I'm assuming I'm going the right direction. You know, th I would say this game is good. It's got a good atmosphere, but I really don't feel tension. It's got a good atmosphere, and the story is kind of intriguing. You know, a ghost possessing a bunk bed. Hi. It's a clown, isn't it? It's a fucking clown. Hi. 
Don't get on there. That was a really bad idea. But as for actually being scary, not so much. It's kind of the same problem I had with the path. Or not the path, um... No, 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 the park, the park, sorry. It's not really scary to me. This is creepy, sure, and the atmosphere is awesome, but I'm just kind of standing here going... Uh, granted, again, I don't scare easily, especially when I'm in a well-lit room. And sadly, I can't be in a non-well-lit room, or you guys can't see my beautiful little face. And I know that's what you're here for. I hope. Okay, that was bad. They spent all night torturing him, didn't they? Hi. You're awfully quiet nowadays. Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. All right, then. I got possessed. I'm calling it. I got possessed. I woke gradually. The room was once again dark. My eyes adjusted. As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually make out the window and the door and the walls and some toys on the shelf, and even to this day, I shudder to think of it, for there was no noise. No rustling of sheets, no movement at all. The room felt lifeless, lifeless, yet not empty. The nightly visitor, that unwelcome, wheezing, hate-filled thing which had terrorized me night after night, was not in the bottom bunk. It was in my bed! Oh, you can see it! You can see the, like, sheets rustling. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless, as if I could not scream. I did not want to let it know I was awake. I had not yet seen it. I could only feel it. I was it was obscured under my blanket. I could see its outline. I could feel its presence, but I dared not look. The weight of it pressed down on top of me, a sensation I will never forget. When I say that hours passed, I did not exaggerate. Lying there motionless in the darkness, I was every bit as scared and I was every bit as scared and frightened, young boy. Uh, keep in mind, this is all happening to a child. If it had been during the summer months, it would have been light by then. But the grasp of winter was long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise. A sunrise which I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I would reached a breaking point. A moment where I could wait no more, where I could survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you threadbare, a shell, a shell of nerves leaving only the slightest trace of you behind. I actually know that feeling. And I can say honestly, that kind, that level of fear, it's something else. I had to get out of that bed. Then I remembered the crucifix. My hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist to find it, minimizing as best I could the sound and vibrations caused, but it could not be found. I'd either knocked it off the top bunk or had, or it had, could I even bear to think of it, been taken from my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost any sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be acutely aware of what death is and intensely frightened of it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there dormant, passive, doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leave it in the bed and hope that I make it to the door? What if it was faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of the top bunk, hoping not to disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that I had not stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix, I began to have the strangest of thoughts. Okay? What, maybe that you should just stay still and hope it goes away? If I don't, if it, if I don't, if I don't pay attention to it, it'll be fine. I've been recording for 44 minutes. I should have split this up into other, into multiple parts. Ah, it's too late for that shit. <laughs> Let's go! Gung-ho. Oh, I'm a fish. I'm a fishy! I'm a fishy! I'm a fishy! I'm a fishy fish! I'm a fishy fish! I'm a fishy fish fish! Fish 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 fish! Fish 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 fish! Fishy fishy fishy! Fish 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 fish! I'm a fishy fish! I'm a fresh fish! I can't swim! I, I know I've said that in other videos, but I can't. So, what this kid is doing, I would be dead by now. Scarlet does not swim. Nope. Are we playing Soma now? Am I in Soma? Is that what's happening here? I'm gonna say that I'm in Soma. Okay. 
Drain water, remove the diving gear. Oh, I'm wearing diving gear. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I just got diving gear. What, did my care? Did I just fall asleep again? Like, oh, strangest of thoughts. Let's fall back asleep with this thing in my bed. I'm in. Yep, we're playing Soma. Daddy! 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 Daddy, there's a demon. Daddy, there's a demon. Daddy, there's definitely a demon. Oh, here's a glow. It's an anglerfish! Hi, anglerfish. I like anglerfishies. They're adorable. Daddy! You should probably put your diving suit back on. BT dubs. Is that a sarlacc pit? You probably shouldn't fall into a sarlacc pit. Okay then. What horrible thing is gonna happen to this child today? Probably something real. Oh. Ready then? Yep, it's a sarlacc pit. Thousand years of slow digestion. Alrighty then. Is it still in there? What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I'd woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it had finally got me. Then I was finally... that I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was toying with me after all. It had been doing just that for countless nights. And now with me under it, pinned against the mattress with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off. Savoring its victory until the last possible moment, like a wild animal savoring its prey. I'm pretty sure animals just go nah, right for the jugular. I tried to breathe as shallowly as possible and mustered every ounce of courage I could. I reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off me. What I found under the mattress covers stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved the blanket, it brushed against something. Something smooth and cold, something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt hand. I held my breath in terror as I was sure I must- it must now have known I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir, it felt dead. Oh, it's a dead body. Dead body, dead body, dead body. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, poorly deformed arm- poorly formed forearm. Is that a fetus? My confidence almost- my confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved further to a disproportionately large bicep muscle. The arms out- the arms outstretched across my chest, with the hand resting on my left shoulder as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. And I realized I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. This is hard to read this much. Whew. For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulder of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in my stomach and my chest as I recoiled my head in disgust at the touch of strang straggled, oily hair. I cannot bring myself to touch its face, though I wonder to this very day what it might have looked, felt like. Dear God, it moved. Uh-oh. Back the fuck up, Junior. Back the fuck up. Host... Hostia? Is that what that says? Hostia? Okay. Okay, that's cool. Alright, and hopefully we are nearing the end of this because I've been recording for like 40-something minutes. I probably should have looked up how long this was. I should have, but I didn't, and that's my own damn fault. But something tells me we're getting close to the- Okay, then, this is some, um, creepy shit. Go into the flesh. That's what she said. <laughs> Got some flying eyeballs here. The last enemy that should be destroyed is death. Okay, leaving now. Getting out of here. If I don't pay attention to the creepy things, then they're not there. That's how this works. If you close your eyes, it's not there. Object permanence. You don't need that. You don't need object permanence. If you don't see it, it doesn't exist. Okay. Hi, Jabba! <laughs> Up. What's up, bruh? Gosh darn it. Fine, I'll go down. Gosh darn it! Fine! Why put the paths there if you can't use them? God damn it. Wait a minute. Can I help you? 
And so I thought it was to do, spin the crawfields if you will, but if you do not choose, I'll move on without you. It chooses never to seek to return to the crossroads of that decision. And chooses wrongly, the choice cannot be unmade. Okay. Can't do anything here, it seems. Alrighty then! Go this way. I guess there's something I have to do for first. Hi, can I help you? Getting out of here now! I can't. I I I, I can't. I can't! Can I go back the other way? Nope. Hi. Oh, it's gonna be one of those, isn't it? Okay. <clears throat> Time to sit back and relax. As we wait for the scares to come. See what I mean? It's good atmosphere and it's creepy, but I'm just like... Hmm. Just stretching. There we go. Okay. So let's get back to what the poor boy is doing. Trying to get the fuck out of here. It moved. It was subtle, but its grip on my shoulder and across my body strengthened. No tears came, but God, how I wanted to cry. As its hand and arm slowly coiled around me, my left leg brushed against the cool wall which the bed lay against. Of all that happened to me in that room, this was the strangest. So I realized that this clutching, rancid thing, which grew great delight in violating a young boy's bed, was not entirely on top of me. It was sticking out from- sticking out from the wall! Oh! Like a spider striking from its lair. Hi. Suddenly its grip moved from a slow tightening to a sudden squeeze. It pulled and clawed at my clothes as if frightened that the opportunity would soon pass. I fought against it, but its emaciated arm was too strong for me. Emaciated arm was too strong! Okay. Its head rose up and writhing and contorting under the blanket. I realized now where it was taking me, into the wall. I fought for my dear life, I cried, and suddenly my voice returned to me. Yelling, screaming, but no one came, because your dad sleeps like a rock! Then I realized why I was so eager to suddenly strike, why this thing had me to have me now. Through my window, th that window which seemed to represent so much malice from outside, streaked hope, the first rays of sunshine. Ah! I struggled further, knowing that if I could just hold on, it would soon be gone. As I fought for my life, the unearthly parasite shifted, slowly pulling itself up my chest, its head now poking up from under the blanket, wheezing, coughing, rasping. I do not remember its features, I simply remember its breath against my face, foul and cold as ice. As the sun broke over the horizon, that dark place, that suffocating room of contempt was washed, bathed in sunlight. I passed out as its scrawny fingers encircled my neck, squeezing the very life from me. But the morning came! So you're okay, right? I awoke to my father offering to make me some breakfast, a wonderful sight indeed. I had survived the most horrible experience of my life until then, and then, and now. I moved the bed away from the wall, leaving behind the furniture I had believed would stop that thing from taking from taking a bed. Little did I think it would try to t it would try to take mine and me. Weeks passed that incident, yet no one, yet not, <laughs> yet on one cold, frostbitten night, I woke to the sound of the furniture where the bunk beds used to be vibrating violently. I lay, sh I lay there, sure I could hear a distant wheezing coming from deep within the wall, slowly fading into the distance. Oh, the thing was in the wall, not the bed. The following year, I was given a larger room on the other side of the house, and my parents took that room as their bedroom. They said they did need a large room, just one big enough for a bed and a few things. They lasted ten days. We moved on the eleventh. Ah! 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 They got it! They got it! They only lasted ten days, and I went in months? My parents were weak! I'm the strong one. I got it. It moves. A game by Snow Owl. Good job! It was very creepy. Very... You stop that. It was very creepy. It was very well done. I just didn't feel like there there was no tenseness to it. Can I move? Oh, I can. Huh. Well then, what do you know? I just didn't feel any tenseness to any of it. Eight million ways to die. Okay then. This one's story at bedtime. Yeah, so the parents moved into the bedroom and then they started getting harassed by the ghost and they went, oh. Well, shit. 
Maybe we should have stayed in there. Yeah. They, they didn't even last two weeks in that room. So the wall was possessed, not the bed. Interesting. Is there anything else or no? Is this just parallax scrolling? Okay. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. My name is Miss Girl the Teenager, and I am and I have played some It Waits. I'll see you all.